Okay, so we're moving on now to how, you know, in our how things work. We've been talking about Bernoulli's equation, Poissois equation, and all the pieces that go with that. And now we're moving on to specifically one specific use of it, airplanes. And so the, I expect you to learn a lot just about how airplanes work because they're such a major part of our society now. We, we're always flying food, supplies, people, visiting grandma. Airplanes are a constant part of life these days. You see them flying over all the time. It's not magic. You need to understand how it works. So <clears throat> uh, let's talk about our third example here of how airplanes work. Now, I already showed you the um, airfoil, which is the shape of an airplane wing. If you go out to any airport and look at the end of all the airplane wings, the, the shape of the wing, if you look at the cross section of the wing, the wing is sticking out, the airplane body is over there, uh, the shape of the wing would look like this. So I've got a toy airplane here. This would be, if you were to chop the wing in half and look at the end of the wing here, that's, uh, that's what this is a picture of. And what this always looks like is a flat side, more or less flat on the bottom, and then a much curvier part on the top. And what that does is it forces a high airspeed on the top and a low airspeed on the bottom. And remember Bernoulli's principle, as airspeed goes up, pressure goes down. So we have a high airspeed up here, which, which means a low pressure. And on the bottom, you've got a low speed with a high pressure. And so the high pressure pushes the wing up. Okay, the high pressure on the bottom pushes the wing up. Now, <clears throat> there's various parts on an airplane. Let me show you a, a fancy airplane. This is the Eurofighter. Uh, we're not going to talk about the details of this one. This one's a little reversed from a normal airplane. Uh, but there are the four basic forces of flight are on all airplanes regardless of their shape. I'm going to show you the details of a, of a basic airplane like this, but the four basic uh, forces are the same on all airplanes. So let me show you these four forces on, a fl on an airplane. The first one you need to know is lift. And that's what we talked about. That's the result of Bernoulli's principle. The high pressure on the bottom compared to the low pressure on the top pushes the airplane up, and this is the force of lift. Okay? And then that's opposed to weight. Now notice how I drew this here. Why did I put the arrows kind of way back here? There's all this stuff up front. Well, it's because I drew these acting at the center of mass. Okay, and this is how you should draw your forces too. When you draw a picture, don't draw your arrows off to the side in space somewhere. Draw them from the center of mass. This is the proper way to draw things. And on a, a jet airplane like this, the engine is buried in here. From here to here is all engine. And that's the heavy part of the airplane. So the center of mass is right here on this airplane. Okay, so I drew the weight coming down here and lift coming up here. And they're going to oppose each other. Now, assuming that the airplane is not going up or down, if the plane is going straight in level flight, then those two forces will equal each other because the net force is zero. If it's not accelerating up and it's not accelerating down, then the net force up and down is zero. Now there's two more forces that you need to know about, and that's thrust and drag. Okay? Now thrust is caused by the engine. It's, it's, what it does is it's pulling air in here, pushing it out the back, just very similar to a rocket. Uh, it's, it's, it's literally just pushing off of the fuel. So as it pushes stuff out the back, that's that, let me just say this this way. Engine pushes air back. Therefore, by Newton's third law, air pushes engine forward. And the engine's attached to the airplane. So that's where you get the thrust, and that's the push forward on an airplane. And and then drag, that just happens. That's air friction. That, 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 there's, there's a couple different kinds of drag, and I'm not going to get into all the details of how that works, but the thing you need to realize is that drag, air friction, always opposes motion. So whichever way the airplane's going, drag's going the other way. Okay? Now, <clears throat> okay, so there's four forces that you need to know, and there they are. You need to know all four of those. Okay? Now the next thing you need to know are the three axes. Okay? Now we live in three dimensions, so we have three axes. Okay? So I've got an airplane here and I have it drawn up here for you. Okay? Now the first one it talks about is pitch. Now students have such a hard time um, grasping this. 
but what I'm talking about is an axis. Imagine that I put a skewer, like a barbecue skewer, straight through the wing of this airplane. Now, remember, I'm always talking about the center of mass of an airplane. So let me just show you what I mean. You can see, I, I'm going to just balance it with two fingers here. Where does it balance? Right there. You see that? My fingers are on the center of mass of the airplane. So right where my fingers are, that's the center of mass. And so all these axes are going to go through that center of mass right there, okay? And so this axis that I'm going to draw for you, this, this axis goes right through that center of mass, through the wing, out the other end, and so you can imagine it, there's a stick there. And so this is called the, roll, the, um, the pitch axis, okay? So the pitch axis tips the airplane up or down, and the airplane rolls around that axis, okay? So, um, <clears throat> so notice the airplane can either go this way or this way about the pitch axis, okay? The next one goes through the nose and out the tail. So imagine a, a stick going here, and still go, notice it still goes through that center of mass in the middle, and so this one causes the airplane can roll from side to side about that axis. Now the pilot has to be able to control all three of these axes. So he's, the pilot has control of the roll, and the pilot has control of the pitch, okay? Now the last axis is the, is the odd one, is not a normal one. Uh, you, uh, <coughs> at least the word is odd. It goes through the center of mass, but right here in the middle. So imagine a stick going right up the middle of, of the airplane here, and, and, it, and you, could, you can turn the airplane around that. Okay, so that's the other axis. Now, I say axis, think axle on a bicycle. A wheel, a wheel rolling around an axle. That's what this is, okay? It's free to roll around that axle, that axis, okay? And this one is called the yaw axis. And so the pilot has control of this yaw axis as well, okay? So those are the three axes of control, okay? So let me remind you what you have to memorize here, and you have to be able to understand what these mean. The four forces on an airplane, it doesn't matter if you've got a normal airplane like this or a jet airplane like I showed you a minute ago, there's always four forces on it. There's three axes of control. The pitch, the roll, and the yaw. Three, three axes of control. And again, it doesn't matter if you've got a fancy airplane or, or a normal airplane like this. It, it's, those are the, the, the three, the four forces and the three axes, okay? Now, the next thing you need to know <coughs> is how do you control those three axes of flight? Now, here's another picture of those just to help you see how to draw them. And I suggest that you, you practice drawing these. Notice the roll, how you can roll around it, okay? You always go around, there's like axles on a bicycle. The, 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 you can roll around these three axes, okay? And uh, that's a balsa wood airplane. Now, how does the pilot control these? There's, there's surfaces that control these. There's three sets of surfaces that control these three axes of flight, okay? So what are the control surfaces? So let's go back in order again. Uh, to control the pitch, okay, we talked about that one first. To control the pick, pitch axis, the pilot controls these two things on the back, they're called elevators. Why would they be called elevators? Well, because if you want to go up, you, may, you point your airplane, you rotate around the pitch axis and point your nose up. It's like an elevator, okay? And you use these two flaps on the back to do that, but they don't call them flaps, they call them elevators, okay? So these two things back here are the elevator. Now, let me show you how to do this. If the pilot wants to go up, here's what they do. They bend, the pilot would bend the elevators up like this. The two elevators would go up, and what that would do is push the tail down and point the nose up, and the airplane goes up, assuming they have enough thrust to pull that off. So let me show you why. Why is it that that points the nose up? Okay, there's two things going on here. <coughs> and I, let me grab a piece of paper. I know I've got one back here. Luke, can you grab me a piece of paper from back there? Let me draw the elevator back behind there, Luke, on the, on the workbench. <coughs> here's the elevator, and he, I'm sorry, here's the, the horizontal stabilizer, and the elevator is the green flap in the picture there. And the air 
is moving this way. So this is on the tail of the airplane. Okay, so I've got it drawn just like this. This, this flat part is here, and the elevator, this part, this thing that's bent up here, is this part back here, okay? Now as the, yeah, the, just either one, the green, the green one's fine. Okay, thank you. So, we've got a, some plans for how to build a rabbit hutch here, but it's a piece of paper, that's the important part. Okay, so there's two ways to make this piece of paper go up. The first way is to blow from the bottom side, and that's just my air hitting it. So my air, hits the paper, it bounces off the paper and goes down. Let me say it a different way. Paper pushed air down. By Newton's third law, if paper pushes air down, then air pushes paper up. That's how the paper goes up that way. I call that the kite effect, because it's the same way a kite works. The, the, kite, the wind blows the kite, the air bounces out, bounces down and the air pushes the kite up. It's the same process. But there's a second way that this works, and that's if you take that same piece of paper, and notice see how, see how I've got it curved across the top here, and now I blow across the top. It's got some wrinkles in it here. You see how I pick it up by blowing across the top? Because I, <coughs> this is Bernoulli's principle. So the I can pick that paper up by blowing across the top. High air speed on the top means low pressure. Because there's still atmospheric pressure on the bottom, it pushes the pressure, it pushes the air, the piece of paper up. Well now, with the elevator, you have the same thing. The main part of the, the, the horizontal stabilizer is here, and the rudder, the, the, I'm sorry, the elevator is pushed up right here. And so that's this picture here, and this air has two, does two things. Part of it goes straight across and hits this and bounces up. Let me say that again. Elevator pushes air up. Therefore, air pushes elevator down. That's the kite effect. So, remember we're talking about the pitch axis here, and when the pilot wants to go up, they pull the point the elevators up, and it pushes the tail down. Okay? Now there's a second way that th these elevators pick the airplane up. And that is Bernoulli's principle. So you've got air that goes straight across here and air that comes across this way. And it's the same thing I showed you earlier. This is a greater distance, same time. That means more airspeed here, less airspeed here, which means more pressure here, less pressure here. And so the elevator is pushed down. And when you push the elevator down, it points the nose up. Okay, so now that's that principle behind how all these control surfaces work. Okay, so to point the nose up, you point the elevators up and it pushes the tail down, which points the nose up. And then if you've got enough thrust, you'll go right on up. Now, what if the pilot wants to go down? Well, if the pilot wants to go down, just point the nose down. Well, then you point the elevators down. And what does that do? Well, it's the same process that I just showed you, only in reverse. So now, the air comes across the bottom, and it picks the tail up, which points the nose down, and the airplane goes down. Okay, so that's how the pilot controls the pitch axis. So let me say that again. Elevators control the pitch axis. Okay? That's the first control surface. Now, the second control surface uh, that I'm going to show you is this one color red here called the rudder, okay? And that's what back here on this vertical stabilizer. <clears throat> and what that does is it controls the yaw. So it's the same sort of thing. It's the same process that I just showed you. Only if, I, if the pilot wants to yaw it to the right, they're going to point the, the, uh, the rudder to the right there. You see that? And that rudder is going to push sideways, which yaws the plane to the right. And if the pilot wants to go left, then the pilot will turn the rudder to the left. And what that's going to do is push the rudder to the right, which yaws the plane to the left. Okay? So the rudder controls the yaw axis. Okay? Last control surface. Now this is the most complicated one. The last control surface controls the roll axis. And that is out here on the wings. It's blue on this picture. They're called the ailerons. Now the ailerons, there's one on this wing and one on this wing. And they always act together and they always act opposite. 
Okay, so <clears throat> if the pilot wants to roll right, for instance, then what's going to happen is we're going to put that aileron up and this aileron down. Okay, so you see how I did that? This one's up, this one's down. Okay, and what that's going to do at the, with the roll axis is going to pick this wing up and push this wing down simultaneously. And it's going to cause the airplane to roll to the right. Okay, so it's going to roll it to the right. Now, if you want to roll it to the left, you do the opposite. So what we'll do is we'll, the pilot will turn this aileron down and this aileron up and is going to pick this wing up and push this wing down and roll it to the left. Okay, so it's going to roll it to the left. So remember, ailerons on the ends control roll. Okay, so elevators control pitch. Rudder controls yaw. Ailerons control roll. Okay, so those are, so let me reiterate what you need to know. The four forces, the three axes, and the three control surfaces. And which of the control surfaces controls which axis? Okay? Now, <clears throat> here's one of the things that you need to understand about airplanes. And you've probably, if you've been on an airline flight, you've seen this happen before. You're flying along, <clears throat> and you're coming, you're getting close to your destination, and the we if you're looking out the window seat you're looking out the window you're looking at the wing and it looks like the wing is starting to fall apart and you hear this whining noise and you're thinking oh no something's not good the wing is stretching out what's going on here's what's happening so <coughs> when the pilot wants to land the airplane you don't just point the nose down and go down why not? Because if you did that, you'd go faster and faster and faster. By the time you get to the runway, you're screaming fast and you've got to bring the airplane to a stop at the end of the runway. Bad idea. You're going to break your landing gear. You're not going to have a smooth landing. It's going to be ugly. You're going to need a runway that's much longer. Not the way to do it. So the way you slow an airplane down is you pull back on your thrust. You remove the thrust. And remember, airplanes fly with Bernoulli's equation. When you bring back the thrust, the airplane is going to slow down. When the airplane slows down, there's less air flowing over the wings. When there's less air flowing over the wings, you don't have as much lift. So if you don't have as much lift, you're going to go down. There you go. That's the best way to do it. Now, here's the thing. Uh, in order to keep the airplane flying, you have to switch your lift mechanism from Bernoulli's force to kite effect. So here's how this works. You slow the airplane down, get slower and slower and slower, and in order to stay from just falling, keep from falling out like a rock, you point the nose up higher and higher. So as you point this nose up, the air comes along and it hits the bottom of the wing and bounces down. So let me say that again. Wing pushes air down, therefore air pushes wing up. So now you've got the kite effect, keeping your airplane afloat while you're coming down to, for a landing, okay? And this kite effect is real nice. The only problem with the kite effect is that look where the pilot's pointing. The pilot is looking up there. Well, where does the pilot need to see? The pilot needs to see the runway down there. Well, this isn't good. So there's another tool on the airplane that helps the pilot for this situation. Okay, so let me show you this tool that helps the airplane land and still have the pilot see where they're going. Okay, so it's this part of the wing, and I didn't put it on this model here, but it's, it's this part back here, the, this inner part of the wing, it has flaps. And the flaps come down the front side, and the slats come down the, I'm sorry, the flaps come down the back side, the slats come down the front side, and here's a picture of a 747 as it's landing here. You see the slats on the front side, they come way forward, and the flaps on the back side come out the back and what that does is I got a picture of it here <clears throat> it changes your airplane wing from this to this it makes your airplane much your airplane wing much bigger and the Bernoulli's force becomes much more drastic so you get a whole lot of lift at low air speeds so now you don't have to point your nose quite so high so you can fly at lower air speeds 
And you say, well, that's great. Why don't you just leave it like that? Make the, that looks wimpy. Why don't you just make the wing shaped that way? Because you can't go fast this way. This produces lots of friction. So if you want to go fast, you got to have a wing that's shaped like this. But if you want to land slow, you have a wing that's shaped like this. So this mechanism of slats and flaps allows the wing to have both shapes as needed. So next time you're sitting on the, on the airplane and you're sitting in this passenger window here and looking out at the wing and you see the wing go and that's the flaps coming down the back and the slats coming out the front, allowing the pilot to see where they're going so they hit the runway when they land. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. Those are your control surfaces. You've got the ailerons. Let me see this. Ailerons here, the elevators here, and the rudder here. And you've got the flaps and the slats to help the pilot see where they're going on, on landing especially, but they also use them on takeoff too. Okay, those are all the pieces of the airplane that you need to know. There's one more concept about airplanes that you need to understand. And that's this idea, and I've already given you the keyword, laminar airflow. So here's how this works, okay? Now, <clears throat> the first time uh, you, you go to fly an airplane, uh, you, go to the, you go to your local flight school and you ask the, the flight instructor, hey, I, I'd like to take lessons, can you tell me some information about it? And they say, oh yeah, it's tons of fun, you'll love it, here's what you need to do. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a the first lesson will be free. We'll go fly in and I'll show you how, to the, the, how this first lesson works. And so the instructor will take you up in the airplane and, and they'll do this real pretty flight. It'll be a beautiful day and you'll get to fly over the football stadium and see the pretty lake and all this fun stuff. And the pilot will let you, and the instructor will say, you can control the airplane for a little while and you'll, you'll put your fingers white knuckled on the yoke and you kind of go, ah, and not do really much. And then, and then the pilot will say, okay, that was fun. And then the, then the instructor will land the airplane and it's a beautiful day and it's a beautiful flight and you say, ah, oh, that was fun. I want more of that. Yes, yeah, sign me up. And then you're signed up and then you're hooked. Okay, that's the first flight. That one's free. Second flight, they say, okay, now if you're going to be a pilot, first thing you have to learn is how to not fly the airplane. Don't fly it this way. But in order for you to not fly it this way, I have to show you how to do it so you don't accidentally do it. And this is really is one of your first few lessons, okay? This is how this works. So the, 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 air, the instructor will get you up in the airplane. They'll get you real high and a long ways away, like over a forest where there's, there, you can't cause anybody any harm. And you're a long ways away and, and uh, you're flying along real nice and you're starting to get a feel for how to turn the thing and all this stuff. And in that situation, you have laminar airflow. The air flows real smoothly over the wing. Everything's working properly. The air flows underneath, the air flows over the top. It's going faster over the top than it is under the bottom. Everything works well. And now the instructor forgets to remind you that he's gonna show you how to not fly the airplane. And the instructor is just gonna say, okay, here's what you need to do. The instructor is gonna say, pretend you just lost your engine. It quit functioning on you. And so the instructor will reach over and make your, pull the throttle all the way back so your engine is just idling out there. It's not doing anything. It's not pulling you. And the instructor is going to say to you, instructor's in the passenger seat, you're in the driver's seat, and the instructor looks at you and says, maintain your altitude. And you say, but you just took away my thrust. I can't do that. And the, pilot, and the instructor says, I don't care. Maintain your altitude. And you say, okay. And you pull the yoke back into your, you start pulling the yoke back. And what that does is it points the nose up. Okay, and you point the nose up. Remember, you're increasing the kite effect here, so you're picking up extra lift. Okay, and so, and, and, but you're slowing down because you've got no thrust at all. So you're slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, and the instructor and your altimeter is starting to go down, and the instructor says, maintain your altitude. And you go, okay, okay, and you pull it back a little bit further, and you're, you're really nervous at this point, and your knuckles are white, and you're pulling this yoke back into your stomach, and, and your nose is pointing way up, and you're looking out the window, and what do you see? you see nothing but blue. Blue as blue can be, okay? You cannot see the ground. It's not straight and level. It's not green and blue. It's just blue, okay? That's all you're seeing. And your altimeter is going down, and your, your, your instructor sitting in the seat beside you, saying emphatically, screaming, maintain your altitude! And you're going, ah! And you've got the yoke all the way back in your stomach, and the nose is pointing way up in the sky, and, you're, and, the, and then all of a sudden, Everything gets silent 
because what happened at that moment is this. Turbulent airflow. It's no longer laminar, it's now turbulent. If the angle of attack is too steep, the air still flows underneath, but it goes turbulent at the top. Now remember, for Bernoulli's effect to work, the air has to flow over the top. So now, let me remind you of where you are. The yoke is back in your stomach. That's the steering wheel on an airplane. Okay, and, that, and pulling it back makes the elevator. So the elevators are all the way up, okay? And, <clears throat> and the nose is pointing clean up at the sky, and the air has completely stopped flying over the wings. Any air there is is just turbulent. You are no longer in control of an airplane. You are now in control of a rock which has no control at all. You're just a big chunk of metal in the sky, okay? And so at this point, it's dead silent, and the instructor's just sitting beside you with a big smile on his face, going, ha, 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 he fell into my trap, okay? And then, here's what happens. The airplane goes like this, and you can't stop it, it just does it. And now all of a sudden, from see, you go from seeing nothing but blue to nothing but green. No blue at all, just green and the airplane's going down fast and your stomach's about 80 feet above you and you're going down real fast and now here's the beautiful thing about this. The instructor says, push the yoke forward. And so you push the yoke forward and the instructor probably helps you do it because you're too scared to do anything. And the instructor pushes the yoke forward for you and it straightens out the elevators and the airplane goes like this and it picks up speed and you regain laminar airflow over the wing. And now you have control of the airplane. And now the instructor calmly says, pull the yoke back a little bit. And so you give the elevators just a little bit, and you pull right out of it, and you're flying the airplane again. Now, you say, well, why would the instructor do this to you? <laughs> because the most dangerous time of flying an airplane is the landing. When you're trying to slow the airplane down and increasing that kite effect, and you want to get the airplane as slow as you can before you hit the runway, it's easier to land if you're going slow. And if you go a little bit too slow, you'll cause turbulence over the wings. And the airplane will do that same thing again, only then you're 50 feet off the ground and then you die. So the instructor has to show you, don't do that. Don't kill yourself flying an airplane. So they teach you how to not fly an airplane. So, <clears throat> what causes turbulence? There are multiple factors that cause turbulence. Let me show you the first one here. The viscosity of the fluid. The more viscous it is, the less likely it is to cause turbulence. If it's thick fluid, it's going to stick to the surface and not spin very easily. Speed of the fluid. The faster it flows, the more likely it is to become turbulent. The obstacle size, the bigger the shape, the more likely it is to become turbulent. And, and then the last one is the density of the fluid. So these are the factors that go into turbulence. And next time we meet, I'm going to give you an equation that talks about turbulence. It's uh, um, Reynolds' equation. So we're going to talk about Reynolds' equation, and we're going to work some examples of this. Uh, but for now, this is a good place to stop. We've talked about how airplanes work and all the pieces of airplanes. Okay, so that's a good place for the end of today's lecture.